the city is planning on launching 5,000 NFTs in the works with Time Magazine, Salesforce, and I think one other group, MasterCard. That's it. Apologies. MasterCard. They're going to work with these three corporations and companies to launch the NFTs, which are going to commemorate the city itself. This comes, of course, after the city last year launched a Bitcoin initiative uh, and its own token, MIA, which did go MIA down 99% and then down a little bit more. Uh, we'll see where this NFT project goes. It's sort of a rough time to launch this, to put it lightly. Uh, we're just going to keep with the NFT negativity this morning. Sorry, Jen. Let's we'll keep going with that. It, I don't really get why they're launching this. Uh, they're also home of the Bitcoin conference, which is notably a very Bitcoin only convention. And now they're launching NFTs. Interesting to see those two things paired together. Jen, I'll hear to you. Yeah, I'm a little more optimistic about this story. So I'll I'll just, you know, not match your energy, but bring the optimism back to the NFT space. I think this is interesting. What I kind of questioned while I was reading it was they're launching 5,000 NFTs in Miami and there is no Web3 native company that's helping bring this to life. It's Time Magazine, MasterCard, and Salesforce. Then I was like, well, maybe actually if we think about mainstream adoption and marketing this to people who are visiting Miami and who can take part in some of the you know real world utility that was outlined in the story, maybe we need non-Web3 native of companies to to take care of that because they've already been speaking to this audience for for a much longer time than than the companies that have are building in web3. Next, I think that when we talk about metaverse and NFTs, we get stuck in this framework of thinking like when we're just going to be in front of our computer, we're going to have this VR headset on and we're just going to kind of seclude ourselves from the rest of the world and it's going to be a really horrible existence. I think this is an example of how an NFT project can get people to a city, can uplift local businesses, uplift local artists, get people in different restaurants and make it make it fun. So for me, this is an iteration of, of, you know, a tourism activity for a city. It's fun. I think we're going to see a lot more of this. And it's a, for me, it's a mix of like the NFT metaverse world and the real world and look into the future. So I like it. Sandley, what do you think? (laughs) Yeah. You know, I was, I was going into it going, oh no, not another Miami crypto (laughs) thing. Um, But yeah, this is, this is kind of interesting. I mean, it will like it says that you know Time USA will help execute the project. Mastercard is gonna offer the NFT holders exclusive benefits like special event access, restaurants, private cultural tours of the city, like you said, Jen. Um, and you know it's it's it sounds like a way you know low risk thing than than launching a token that you don't know how people are gonna use or like do what with. You know, like I, it was just like weird to to start off with, but this seems more of a cultural move, and it might actually resonate. But I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Um, I just want to kind of quickly point out, though, that you know, uh, the mayor Francis Suarez, even though that this all of this kind of went south with Miami Coin, he was very optimistic about staying on crypto. And of course, you know, you can't really backtrack on a, on a bad idea you've endorsed and say, yeah, yeah, I admit, you know, I was wrong. Um, so it's interesting to see him kind of jump onto something again, again, like at a, at a weird time in markets. So interesting to see how this kind of goes and how he responds to that. But I think, I think it, this, this one is, is a much better idea than Miami coin. That's just my, uh, my spiel. Adam, what do you think? So full disclosure here, uh, my company Tokenly um, has had an agreement in the past um, and actually still does with the Miami Downtown Development Authority around some related issues here. So I do have some conflicts. Um, so I'll draw back kind of to the the kind of broader point here, which is that I think that for a city like Miami, and I think that this is not just about Miami, I think that it's just in general, I think that cities are struggling to figure out ways to differentiate, right, in an increasingly global world, in an increasingly competitive world. And one way that you can do that is you can be supportive of new technologies. And so what Miami has done over the last couple of years, and I think has really benefited significantly, is they simply provided an alternative experience for crypto type users, companies, projects, et cetera, compared to many of the other state and national governments that are out there. And I think that as a result of that, in particular Miami, but Florida in general, has really benefited from 
you know, a time when many other states really, really suffered. So to me, that embrace is a lot less about specific pieces of technology or specific projects. And it's a lot more about kind of the mindset of inviting in innovation, of trying to support all of these new things, of understanding that stuff is going to fail sometimes and that sometimes it's going to fail in ways that are even embarrassing, but being comfortable enough with the decision and the general strategy to kind of carry forward with that. So that's really what I see when I look at Miami. And then um, specifically around this one, the name that jumped out at me is Salesforce, right? Like MasterCard, that makes total sense. Like they've been active in NFTs, you know, Time also very active. Uh, Salesforce, I don't really know what they're doing here. Uh, that jumped out at me as, as a little bit of a strange name, but uh, Will, I'll throw it down to you. Yeah, I kind of keep riffing on what you're saying. The Salesforce thing really quickly looks like they're launching their own NFT printer. So we'll see what that looks like when it's all said and done. But just talking about like Miami's intentions going into this and Francis Suarez, a Miami mayor's intentions as well, it was all about job creation, right? That the desire to bring a lot of what San Francisco had during the worst of 2020. A lot of people were leaving San Francisco and moving them to Miami. And he was very vocal about that play, very loud on Twitter, courting a lot of the technology people out there. And for good reason, right? It made sense. But now we're in a different situation, right? He's playing with a lot of these different tokens, a lot of these different projects, the coins are down. And it's like, ooh, maybe it doesn't quite make sense for you to be involved with this necessarily, especially when they have the Bitcoin conference there, right? Which is notably very anti-NFT very anti different tokens. And so if like your purpose was to get job creation and you got the Bitcoin conference there, I'm wondering why they keep riffing on it and keep playing with it. It's just a little interesting to me to see that happening. Of course, I agree with you, Adam. Like I think it's just important to keep moving forward with different technologies and keep innovating. But if you have a golden goose, why kill it? 